Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. Well, I'm coming back at you with another poke review. I um, wanted to let everybody know how uh, event number three of the Arizona Poker Tour went and, uh, well, give you some, some info on some of the big hands and let everybody know how it played out. So, first off, I want to say that I am not um, the type of person who has an issue with getting complaints or anything like that. And I actually try to work all my viewers' complaints or compliments into my videos. So, after my last poker recap, um, I got a comment from a viewer who said that it was exhausting to watch. And I agree that a lot of times my recaps do go on and on. As with anything, I'm long-winded. I admit that. I talk a lot. Um, and especially about topics that I'm interested in, which really just happens to be the only topics that I discuss on my website. Why would I talk about anything else that I'm not interested in? So when it comes to topics of sports or poker or movies or shoes, I talk a lot. So I admit that. So I apologize if at any time these videos do seem like they go on a lot or are exhausting, to quote the viewer specifically. But in the same sense, I've also gotten a lot of positive feedback regarding how I break down a lot of the hands and the, the level that I take it to. So in the same sense, I don't want to, to take away from something that some people like just to please other people. So I came up with a conclusion. I will, for each poker recap, I will simply do a basic recap of what happened in the tournament before I do any of the hand analysis. So if you're curious just to see how I did, you know, and that's all you want to hear, then there you go. If you want to stick around and see some of the hand analysis and see how the tournament progressed, you can stick around for that as well. So without any further ado, we'll get right to it. Um, third event of this season's Arizona Poker Tour um, ended up actually had a pretty good showing. Um, you, they've only been getting like 15 to 18 people. Um, we ended up with 22. So uh, it was at least a little bit better than it had been um, recently. So that was solid. Um, three decent tables with a lot of people I hadn't seen in a while. Um, the tournament gets a lot of different faces each each event. You know, you can see the same. 15 people for three straight months, and then none of those 15 show up, and another, a different 20 show up. Um, that was what kind of happened this time. I saw some people I hadn't seen in a couple years um, there. So it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool getting to see some old people that I used to play with at my house, um, as well as at that tournament. So ended up, um, it ran pretty well um, in the beginning. Ended up going into the uh, the second table with about 5,000 chips. Um, and then just caught a little bit of a downturn. Really couldn't get much traction going. And um, then next thing I know, we're getting close to a combining for the final table. We're down to 11 people and just ran into some bad luck. <laughs> so I ended up getting knocked out in 11th, um, which makes my second 11th place. Second time going out one before the final table, as well as one fifth place. So maybe it was sixth place. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Maybe it was eighth place. I don't know. I had one one final table finish and two that weren't. So two that were right there on the bubble of the final table. So um, it ended up being a pretty decent tournament. I would have liked to have scored a little bit more points because some of the people who are ahead of me in points ended up finishing ahead of me. Um, so that kind of screws me. Um, it would have been perfectly fine if I would have only gotten 11th place if they would have gotten 12th, 13th, 14th. But they actually ended up making it to the final four or five. So I really don't know how I'll be sitting with points. i got to take a look at it and see over these next two events how well I have to do. Because um, I think I'm kind of right there on the, I don't not not quite on the bubble, but I think I'm in striking distance to make it to the championship table without winning an event. Obviously, I'd rather just win an event and be done with it um, and make it, you know, qualify for the championship table. But... We'll see. I mean, it's not really, it, it, nothing's in the, nothing's for sure yet. Um, other than the people who've won events, nobody's really guaranteed. So, ended up, um, you know, an, an okay showing. I felt I played really good poker for the first probably two hours. Um, when the tournament started, I felt like I was playing very, very solid cards. Uh, the table, excuse me, huh, 
I'm tired. Um, the table that I was playing at, I actually felt pretty confident about everybody that I was playing with. I, I have a decent read on most of the people that I was playing with, so I felt pretty pretty solid um, where I was positioned and the people I was playing with. But when we went to the next table, things got a little bit more rocky. Um, I, I don't know, I just kind of fell out of my groove a little bit, and I had a couple hands where I just kind of got unlucky, you know, or I made a play and it just didn't pay off. And it was weird because it wasn't really any one hand. It was just, you know, a few hands, okay, I'm going to call this bet, and then, you know, get bet out on the, on the flop. Or, okay, I'm going to raise here, bet the flop, get raised, I'm out. You know, it was just some things like that happened, and it really, it really wasn't any one hand. It just all added up until finally I was sitting at about, right about 2,200 chips and um, ended up pushing all in. Um, with, I believe I ended up pushing with Ace, God, that shows how bad it was at the end, I don't even remember. I believe I ended up pushing, I know I, I, know I lost a guy named Jason, um, who actually is back-to-back -back season champion. Um, oh, that's what it was. I had top pair, he flopped two pair. Um, we, I pushed on the, I bet on the flop, he raised, I shoved, he called, he had two pair. Um, and I had top pair, and it just was what it was. Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't hit. I had ace ten. The flop came up like ten four seven or something like that, and he had four seven, uh, or maybe it was ten seven. I don't remember. No. Yeah, it was ten seven. It was because I was hoping that an ace would hit, um, or whatever. So it didn't, um, and I ended up getting knocked out. So. That sucked, but was what it was. So, third or third event took 11th place. We'll see how it does in terms of points, but um, that's kind of the quick recap. So there are a few hands that I wanted to go back over, um, kind of let you guys know how some stuff progressed. Couple, couple pretty cool hands that worked out well. Um, couple hands that didn't. <laughs> so, I gotta stop doing these these videos right after the tournament. It's about four o'clock in the morning right now, and I'm a little tired. Um, but if you guys are done watching the recap, there you go. If you want to stick around for some hand analysis, stick around. So there you go. So uh, pretty quick, uh, pretty early on. I actually my table draw I thought was pretty solid. Um, I was there with a guy named Ron who I used to play with in my tournament, um, the Imperial Poker Tour, um, and. I had a decent read on him. He's kind of a crazy player, but for some reason I seem to be able to have a good idea where he's at most hands, just have a good feeling. Um, but we've got a little bit of a rivalry together just because he works with me, and so, you know, stop by my desk and we'll talk a little mess to each other and whatever, whatever. So we have a little bit of a rivalry going, and because of that, it kind of works to my advantage sometimes. Um, it also worked that... I mean, I, I was right to his right. Um, he was a big blind when I was a small blind. So it worked out a couple times to where everybody else folded, but he would call just because, you know, it's me. They were kind of early on. Um, he was a big blind, folded all the way around to me. I raised. He called just because. Um, I had pocket aces. Ended up, checked the flop. He checked. Um... He, I bet on the turn, he let it go, said, I think I had you. I showed him the aces, you know, obviously he didn't. Had another hand pretty close after that where I had a pocket sixes, and I was actually on the big blind. It was a time around the table. I was on the big blind. He was under the gun, and he made a, a decent size raise, probably three times the big blind, and uh, I ended up calling. I was the only one who called. I, um, the flop came up 5-5-4, five, five, if I'm not mistaken. Um... I checked, he checked. I figured he'd throw a continuation bet in there, but he didn't. He just checked. So river card, I mean, I'm sorry, turn card hit a six. So now I'm sitting with the set, feeling pretty solid, you know, whatever. He ends up um, throwing a small bet in there, I call. Um, river card comes up, and I'm hoping that he's going to take a stab again. So I check again. Probably got a little bit too trappy. Um, I, maybe I could have gotten called if I would have thrown a bet out there, or maybe... Even better, he would have tried to posture at it because he ended up having ace queen. Um, River card came out of blank. It was, it was, a, I believe, like a ten or something. Um, so I mean, yeah, I, I guess I could say I was a little worried of the straight, but 
if you're raising me at that point with deuce tray or seven eight come on from under the gun one round into the tournament i doubt it so i, I mean i really pretty much knew i had the the second nuts i didn't put him on five at that point you know and i, I didn't think he had pocket ted sitting around to hit the set on the river so i felt pretty good with it i I guess I probably could have bet, and maybe he would have tried to push back at me just because we have a little rivalry. But I checked, and he checked, and I showed him the, the sixes, and you know he had ace queen. I didn't even need to hit the set, but I did. Um, had another uh, pot that took down from uh, from two different people. I had pocket nines, um, raised them pre flop, got two calls. Flop came out, and ace actually flopped, but I still bet it, um, and ended up taking down that pot. Then um kind of. It kind of grinded out a little bit, made a couple moves here, there, you know, built up my stack a little bit. Um, then again, uh, another hand hit where I was on the you know, the smaller big blind, and it was raised by um, under the gun plus two, and then it was called by the cutoff, the dealer, and then me. Yeah, there were four people in the pot. Actually, I think five. I, I'm pretty sure that the, the big blind called as well. Pretty sure Ron called. Yeah, he did. Ron called as well. So the flop came up. I had 10 nine of clubs. Flop came up 10 blank blank. Okay, so I've got top pair. Okay, kicker. I don't love it, but I, I don't know. I just oh, No, I'm sorry. I didn't have top pair. I had middle pair. It came up like queen 10 or king 10 blank. Um, so I had middle pair. So I checked. Um, big blind checked, checked, um, all the way to the, I want to say the guy who made the, the initial raise, the undergun plus two, he made a continuation bet, the, nobody left, it was funny, under the gun called, dealer called, or no, maybe the dealer folded, under the gun called, I called, and Ron called on the big blind, so we all, there was still at least four people in the pot, so turn card hits another club. Now I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling all right now. You know, I've got four to the flush. You know, ten high flush. I've got middle pair. I feel okay. So again, I check. Goes to the guy who initially raised, and now he checks. Now this is weird to me because I'm like, if you bet on the flop, I guess if you bet on the flop, you got two callers. Maybe you're just giving up on the hand. But in the same sense, if you actually had any part to that, now some draws just came up more. I mean, and also. You know, if somebody's sitting on Queen Jack, they flopped open-ended on the flop. Wouldn't you want to charge them to see another card? Anyway, it checks around. River card hits. Boom. I hit the flush. All right. Cool. Now I'm like, we got four people behind. I got to take a stab at this pot. You know, I, I, I got to get something in there. So I had to bet in 300. Now, mind you, the pot at this point, the blinds were probably only, I would say, 5, 10, 10, 20, 24. 2040 probably yeah probably 2040 yeah it wouldn't have even been 30 60 it would have been 2040 and so but you figure 2040 pre-flop was was raised to 120 so four people called that so you had a you had like a 600 dollars pot so i just threw 300 into there and ended up getting called by all four people or all other three people in there and ended up turns out that one guy had two pair one guy just had top pair, other guy had the flush but to the deuce, or the deuce in the tray, I believe, and then I scooped it with the 10-9 a club flush. So it was a great pot for me, and that was the pot that really shifted the tide. I'd been up pretty much from the beginning because I had those aces, and then I had the set of sixes, and had the, the nine, so I've been up since pretty much the beginning, but that pot really helped me, and that took me from being at, you know, 2,000, to now being up, you know, uh, that was, I mean, you figure there was $1,200 in bets just on the river. Then you add in the other $600, so that's $1,800, plus the bet on the flop would have probably been another $600. So you got to figure that was probably at least a $2,200 pot, maybe as much as $2,400, $2,600. So being at $2,000 already, that put me right up there to $4,600, $4,800. I was sitting nice. So ended up... Uh, um, that table broke pretty soon after that, and then I went to the second table, and I actually got seated to the immediate right of my boy Bill, and Bill is a great player, um, very, very adept player in both Hold'em, Omaha, 
really can play all the games. Um, really been big on Omaha lately. He's a really cool guy, really good friend of mine, and uh, he's not only my poker buddy, but he's also my strip club buddy. He's the guy who introduced me to the Spammer Rhino in Vegas, so huge shout out to my boy Bill. He's a beast for that. Um, and just a really cool dude, really knows poker. He's one of those guys you can just sit with and talk poker for hours, and he's not going to get bored. He's not going to think, why is this you know, guy talking poker for the past three hours? You know, Why is he breaking down hands? And I also like it because he's the type of person that when you say, when you try to tell a, a, a story, he's the type of person who makes you think about every single aspect, about what position were you? What position was the person who called? How many chips did you have? How many chips did they have? Where was this? Where was that? Which are all the things that a good poker player should be thinking about, which I credit him with part of the reason I can actually remember these recaps. Because every single hand that happens, I think about how I would explain it to somebody, and I think about all those details and all those aspects to it. So... Part of the reason I'm so exhausting is because of Bill, so blame him. Um, <laughs> but overall, um, he's a good player, and I know he's a good player, so he's a player that I'm going to try to go out of my way not to go up, you know, head-to-head -head with. Not because I'm trying to collude or anything like that, but there's certain players when you play with people that you know to stay away from, and there's other players that you know to pick on. Bill is one of the players that I know to stay away from, just like there's a lady at the tournament named Kate. She's another person I know to, stick, you know to stay away from. Then there's some other people at the tournament. I'm not going to say any names just by some chance that they actually watch my videos. And I don't want them to know that I'm just coming after them. So, I knew I wanted to kind of stay out of Bill's way. And surprisingly, we both actually stayed out of each other's way. Not even really intentionally. It was just kind of how the cards fell. If either one of us was in a pot, it would be more along the lines of blind, you know, I was, there were four people in the pot, so I called the bet. Or, the, you know, he would just call a small raise from the big blind or things like that. We weren't going heads up with each other, you know, ramming and jamming. So, I ended up, um, picked up a few pots, you know, making moves. Not, nothing too spectacular. Then I picked up Ace King on the big blind. And Lady Kate is a very solid player. Um, she's placed... In the state championship, she's placed in the Arizona, in the women's state championship for Arizona. She's just a solid player. She spends probably more hours than really anybody there at the poker room. She's always out at Casino Arizona. Um, but so she ended up didn't have too many chips left. I would say she probably started the uh, the the tournament. I mean, I'm sorry. She probably started the hand with 1,200 chips, maybe maybe 15, 1,600. So blinds at this point are. I want to say, do they go 6120? No. Maybe they're 4080, 50, 100. Maybe they were 6120. I can't remember what the blind schedule was. But I would say she probably had about 10 to 12 big blinds. So I pick up Ace King, suited, clubs, on the, on the big blind. She ends up making a raise to almost, it was probably about a third to half of her stack. And I automatically, in my mind, have it that I am pushing this pot. I'm going to shove. Regardless of, like, if, if 15 people call, okay, then I'll just call and see a flop. But where I was at with it is I wanted to get heads up against her because I figured, even if she's got a pocket pair, even if she's got jacks, I want to see all five cards. I get way better equity on my money to see all five cards and put it in a decision for all her chips. So it ends up folding around to me, as I wanted it to, I shove, instantly just grab a stack, and I had a nice tower at that point, so I just grabbed all my blacks, and was just like, blood out. It was kind of tight. She ends up thinking about it for a second, and she calls. She never ends up showing what she has, but I didn't pair, and my big slick held up. So, she had a king-queen type of hand, a queen-jack type of hand, something along those lines. Um, and I ended up taking her out. So, she was the only person that, um, that I eliminated... Leave, yeah, she was the only one I eliminated. Um, I had another hand where I took a good amount of chips off of somebody with pocket kings. Um, they ended up getting not, they had pocket nines, and I took a decent pot off of them with that. But then it just, things went a little south, and next thing I know, I'm, I'm sitting at like 2,500, and it was, there was one hand that, that did kind of hurt me. Um, I ended up getting, I lost to a, to a flop Straight. Yeah, the flop came up. I had ace-jack. The flop came up uh, 
Ace King Ten. He had King. He had, he had a Queen Jack. So flops the joint. I have Ace Jack. You know, top pair, decent kicker, whatever. Ends up betting and calling all the way down. Then on the river, he makes a good re-raise of me. And I had, I bet it on the flop. I would say the blinds at this point were, we'll say 75, 150. So I'd made it 400 pre-flop, got a call. Flop came out, I made it another 400, got a call. Turn card came, I bet probably 650, got a call. And then river card came out, I bet probably 800. And he raised to 2,800. And I should have gotten away from it. It was just one pair. But I didn't. I mean, I, and I even thought about it for a while. And I'm sitting there thinking, Big Slick has me murdered. You know, Ace Queen has me crushed. Ace 10 has me crushed. What could I even beat there short of a, a, a king, you know, a king hand? Or an ace rag. The problem is with the guy who beat me, Jason, the guy who's won the past two seasons, is he's a very he's a very weird player. He can go from being I mean he changes gears very well. He can go from being the ultimate rock for five rounds where he mucks every single hand to going on a run where he bets ten hands in a row and it is what it is, you know. So it's just, it's a really tough spot to be in when when you're up against him. He's a, he's a very he's gotten a lot better from when the very first time I played with him compared to where he is now. He's actually a really good player now. So I ended up calling and that crushed me. So I guess there was one big hand, but that one took me down to about 2,000 chips and blinds had probably you know close to there went up to uh, 153. Yeah, 153, and then they went up to 2-4 after that, and I was picking my spots, I was shoving, shoved with ace-8 suited, took it down, shoved uh, with ace-queen, took it down, raised um, with king-9 suited, took it down, so I built my stack up a little bit, I was probably about like, I don't know, 2,400, 2,800, around there, and um, then just... You know, ran into some bad luck on the end, and just kind of was what it was, honestly. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot I could do. The, the hand kind of played itself. Maybe I could have gotten away from it, but I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't happy with my performance, but I was happy with my first <laughs> with the performance at the beginning of the night. But then when I went to the other table, I just couldn't really get any traction and was mucking a lot and... I don't know, just, it, it was like the mojo change, it was like the vibe change. Maybe it was because I was sitting next to my boy, you know, and even if it was inadvertent, we started talking a little bit more, and we, you know, we bullshit a lot, and maybe I just wasn't focusing as well, stopped listening to my music, I noticed that, I was listening to my music at the, um, wow, I think somebody's breaking into my house, if I die, this is on camera, that was really weird. Um, <laughs> but in the beginning, I was listening to my music, I was really focused on the cards, and I don't know, I, I just kind of lost focus, I guess. So, not happy with it, but at the end of the day, it was almost another final table, so the three tournaments with nothing worse than an 11th place finish, and this was at least a little more respectable, we had, you know, 22, we had over 20 people, getting 11th when there's only 15 people really isn't that respectable. But, we'll see what happens, and uh, hopefully next tournament I can take it down and Secure my final table seat, hopefully. So, there you go. There's the recap for event number three in season 15 or 16 of the Arizona Poker Tour. Ended up 11th place. And, uh, eh, my boy Bill, for the record, ended up getting 10th place. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but uh, he ended up taking 10th place. So, a decently solid day, and uh, we both were happy with it. Played four and a half, five hours of poker, and didn't have to spend much. So, it was pretty decent. So, there you go. If you guys have any questions or any comments regarding this video, I welcome them as always. Um, even if they're complaints, I still welcome them. See, I don't remember what your screen name was, but I listened to you. I'm sure you're not watching the video because I've been exhausting to this point, but I listened and I changed. So <laughs> hopefully you keep watching my videos. But uh, there you go. I know a lot of people do like the analysis, so pretty in-depth there, and hope you guys liked it. So let me know what you guys think of the overall video, what you think of the tournament performance, and uh, 
And as always, thanks for checking out my videos. So once again, Matthew Manley for MatthewManley.com. Event number three, Arizona Poker Tour recap. And uh, until the next video, make sure you check out the rest of my videos. As always, you can check them out up on my website, MatthewManley.com, or you can search for me on YouTube, search Matthew Manley Poker. Um, we got all my videos up there. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel so you'll be first to find out about new videos. Maybe throw me a couple comments, throw me a couple likes, throw me a couple views, suggest it to your friends. I won't say no. Of course, you can like your boy's page up on Facebook, search for Matthew Manley Poker, and like the page. And then, as always, follow me on Twitter. Um, my Twitter name on there is at Matthew Maley. And uh, I'm always tweeting about sports and culture and all kinds of stuff. So, always up on that. So, definitely follow my every move on there. And uh, stay tuned. Um, some things are in the works. I don't want to give too much away, but looks like it's going to be a rather interesting summer. So, looks like both personally, professionally, and uh, from a website standpoint, this is going to be a very fun summer. So, stay tuned. Got lots of big things popping off and uh, lots of poker things going to be happening this summer. So, stay tuned as always. And until the next video, I'm officially signing off. Peace out, y'all. Have a great weekend, or what's left of it.